Hi, this is Mark from LongAmmoWatch.com, and welcome to another episode of Watch and Learn. Uh, today's gonna be a more like a watch and do an experiment, or watch me do an experiment. Uh, good old engineering way. Uh, I'm actually not wearing any watches today because I don't want to scratch any of them because I'm gonna be uh, doing some weird stuff. So what are we doing? Well, let's be doing something like this. Uh, you've heard me discuss in the past ISO 6425, which is a, um, a dive watch spec, and there is a certain portion of it that states that you, uh, the, the spring bars must be able to take around 44 pounds of, uh, of force uh, before breaking, and it's just, you know, it's obviously so that the watch will fall off your wrist. So I was like, okay, you know, I thought about this a while ago. I'm like, wow, that's like a lot of force, but, you know, they say it, so... I want to try it out, and I just I did a quick experiment on my own, and obviously it's not a 007, but uh, it's a marathon. But I took this watch like this, and I just pulled the strap um, from one end and to the buckle, and at way under the spec limit, uh, the buckle failed. Not the spring bars, the buckle on the SKX. I, I get not an SKX, I know, uh, and I was like, wow. It's like I wonder if Seiko. Orion, anyone I conforming to ISO 6425 actually test their watches because I can't believe it broke. So I had to then go out and purchase ISO 6425 because obviously it's copyrighted and you can't just put it online for anyone to read for free. So I went out and purchased a spec from ISO and when I saw the way the test was devised and how it's written, I was like, oh, the test is way different. They basically simulate it like it's on the wrist of a person and you're pulling this way, across, okay? And you might say, oh, okay, well, that doesn't really make any kind of a difference. Well, it does, because now you're dividing the load between two sides and, you know, 40 pounds this way, uh, you know, it's dividing up halfway in both directions. Actually, not even halfway. If you're really into engineering, you'll know that it's gonna go to the lower spring force side and it's gonna load it up. Um, excuse me, it's gonna go to the higher uh, spring force side first and it's not gonna load. It's kind of like an electrical circuit and, and two resistors. Um, so I was like, let's let's make a test for it. So this is kind of what I did. Uh, I'm not really handy with this stuff. So I made a little test jig out of a, a scrap 007. Um, it's got no hands on it. I think I've used it in other videos. And um, I'm gonna load it up. I have a little luggage scale that will do the reading for me and we'll see how much force it can take. So uh, let's check out the test setup. So here I've got my setup. Uh, a videographer, producer, I am not. I'm good at selling watches and uh, I guess engineering I was pretty decent at. So I've got my phone as a camera set up on this force gauge, which is really just a um, the luggage scale. And then through the middle, I've got the strap that you normally would hang your luggage from. From that is a piece of twine with a one inch dowel, another one inch dowel, and it's wrapped around this SKX that has no hands. Again, it's a junk piece, but for our purposes of experiment, it really does not matter. We're just testing those spring bars and I guess the attachment here. I doubt the rubber is going to fail. From the bottom, another piece of twine. I will put my foot through it and slowly press down. You'll be able to watch the force scale uh, through whoops through the other camera that we'll be recording and we will see uh, how much force it takes before it finally lets go not the most scientific thing in the world but it will show to us whether this really does take uh, you know roughly 44 pounds or so uh, before the spring bars give or something else gives okay here we go I'm gonna start weighting it down and I'm just gonna keep going down 20 30 40 50, way past the spec already, 60, I'm still going, 70, 80. So I'll go through slow motion later and we'll see what, we'll see where it broke, but let's see what broke. Uh, let's see. Ha! The twine broke. Check it out. So it didn't even, the spring bars didn't even fail. They're still firmly attached. The rubber didn't rip. The spring bar in the clasp still intact. So I'll just uh, look at the video and we'll see uh, how much force it took to uh, finally bust it. Okay, so uh, we're back and as I showed you, 
only part that came up, the only thing that broke on the whole setup was one of the knots I tied in the string. It was my uh, best uh, Cub Scout square knot. Uh, maybe I should use a bowline or something. Uh, but other than that, it's fine. This is the whole apparatus. You can see it now that it's off the jig. Um, just for, I guess, for completeness, I'll open it up and show you what it looks like. Still works fine. I uh, I did screw the dowels, the wooden dowels, into the straps to prevent them from slipping. It might have affected the results a little bit, but you know I'm sure if the results were closer to what it needed to be, uh, what's the spec 44, and if it came out to be like 45, I would have said, oh boy, you know, maybe the dowels impacted it. And but no, nah, we went so we went way over over 80 pounds before the knot slipped. So factor safety of probably at least two uh, that we're looking at, which is really impressive when you think about it. Uh, so don't forget, now these are, uh, the watch is meant to pass the spec. Uh, so it's using what they call Seiko fat spring bars. They're super thick. Uh, they hug the strap really nice uh, when you when you slip it through um, the acceptance hole in the, in the end of the strap. Uh, and ditto when it goes into the end lugs. It's super thick. Would standard 1.5, 1.8 millimeter spring bars pass the same test? I really hesitate to say yes. I do not think they would. Um, I thought about doing the test and I really didn't want to because if it does fail at a lower number, it doesn't mean it's an inferior product. It's just not you know made to qualify uh, for the... ISO 6425 uh, dive watch standard. So uh, other than that though, I mean, obviously a total pass. Um, I, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Uh, let's see, I think that's about it. So this has been Mark from longironwatch.com showing you, uh, do dive watches pass the pull test in the ISO 6024 uh, spec? Please like the video if you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to the channel if you're not done. So if you have any questions or comments or you want to add something engineering like, put it down below and I'll be sure to address it as soon as I can. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.